Hello, hello, hello. My name is Piscap, and I'm the author of PK's Rebalancing Mod. This is going to be a Let's Play of sorts to showcase my own mod, and to show off strategies and tips, and how I end up playing the game. The idea is to get people acquainted with the mod who may be struggling, because I know it's probably one of the harder mods out there. A lot of mods don't necessarily make the game harder, but they add new things. This mod adds a lot of new things, but it does try to make the game a little harder. I will be playing with curses, or with no tile set, so it's going to be all the ANSI symbols. It's going to be a bunch of periods, and commas, and ampersands, and all kinds of funsies. We're going to have a good time. The first thing we're going to do is create a world, because this is a freshly compiled game. It's all up to date to today, January 4th, and everything's set up. I've taken one or two other takes of this, and, well, I'm not very good with talking to people and filling the blank space. I'm a fairly blunt person in general, but, uh, I'll do my best for you guys, although I don't plan to make this my hobby. So what I'm doing here is playing with my own preferred list of mods. I have boats, which I honestly never use. I just like the idea of them being there. We've got filthy clothing, which I'm really kind of mad. I don't know why people don't like it more. It's a fun mod. It only affects the early game. And the effects it does have, not a big deal. If you're trying to craft in filthy clothing, then you're probably safe enough to do other things, like take the clothing off and craft, or get some soap and clean it off with level 1 fabrication with a washboard. Whatever. People don't like it, and that's fine. As long as it's here, I'm all happy with it. No flaming weapons and no survival armor. Flaming weapons are silly, like kebabs and all the silly fallout weapons. I'm okay. And then no survivor armor. Survivor armor is OP anyway. It's all high-end stuff you can craft before you can even scavenge good armor. It, I don't like it. And then we have PKs for balancing, of course. We're going to save that list. We're going to make our world. I have size 10 cities, 5 spacing. 5 spacing gives me enough time to explore the world, and it gives cities time to be big and by themselves. Which is nice, because most of the stuff I do add is outside of cities. For obvious reasons, I don't mess with the city crafting. I've got one and a half time spawn factor and half item spawn factors. Now, monster drops aren't really included in this, so this is like if I go into a garage, I won't find welders and things like that. Other than that, everything's pretty standard. 14 day seasons would probably be the biggest thing to point out. The faster the season, the faster the Evo. So if you don't want the Evos, or if you like it slow, then do longer seasons. I used to do 28 day seasons. It works out pretty well as far as that, but it is slow. And finally, I have wandering and static spawns, and I have wandering and static NPCs. So let's create a happy world, and we're going to take the hobo start. This is a midnight burning building hobo. He has no real skills. He's going to have no armor. He's going to have a lot of space taken up by alcohol. He's not in the ideal position to go running around in the middle of winter, naked. So, let's see what he can do. I suppose he needs a name, doesn't he? Boop, 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 boop. Randomize name. Randomize name. Randomize name. Yeah, Kevin Grasso sounds good. He's going to start in a house. A burning house. And as you can see, he has two melee, which is just enough to give him an edge in running around. And he has decent stats. Yeah, he's he was made before we had that multi pool stuff, and I don't really have an interest in making multi pool characters, so I don't. Anywho, first thing I want to do, I want to run. Second thing I want to do is I want to look around, and see what's happening. Ah, uh, that that book is useless to me, but the cotton hat isn't, and that glow stick isn't, and that NPC isn't. As you can see, we're inside a house right now. In fact, we're inside a bedroom. These purple things over here, they're beds. This is the door. We come up here, we have two windows, which are just quotation marks. 
everything is pretty easy to see and read and understand. This game is very modular and they do a very good job setting the symbols to mean very obvious things. There's none of this goblin cabinet hive world stuff going on like you see in Dwarf Fortress with the tile sets. I don't know what the tile sets are like here in this game. I really just don't mess with them at all. Anywho, this game is very easy to learn how to play curses on. Because it's very modular, it's in a modern setting, and you can see exactly what's going on if you take the time to look. So, hopefully you guys will just learn a little more about it and play with it for yourselves. The second thing I want to do, third thing I suppose, check to see what's happening here on the map. Now, I started in this one-stop city. There's a couple things I can know about it first. I made this place so I do know a little bit about what's happening. The gas station and the church and this pond right here are the three most useful things in here. The warehouse is empty, it's kind of eh, and the park is full of children. But the gas station is going to have a shotgun, it's going to have food, it's going to have a road map, it might have medication, it has a pipe so I can use those. It has all kinds of fun goodies. The church it sometimes has some coats, it sometimes has things like wristwatches, and, you know, lots of fun things. Hats, which can be hard to find early in the game. It has all kinds of things like that. And it has that computer for light. The pond is water, which is important for an alcoholic who's drinking hard liquor. The bar is obviously a source of liquor. And the fast food restaurant has a parking lot. That's its justification. But you can see it comes up over here, and we can follow the road outside of town. That is a separate town, wherever that ends up. This down here, which you can see, is a very large, by the way, town. And we probably won't be going down there, because look at all the forest and the swamps, and I don't have a car, so we're probably going to head up. But we can see we're not that far away from civilization. So what we want to do... Well, first I like to mark where I spawn, just so I know it's a habit of mine. So we're going to probably head over to the gas station, see if I can't scavenge my way around to the church, and I'll decide what I'm doing from there. But when the day goes up, I want to be on the outskirts down in the church, or just away from the center in general. There's not a lot of zombies in a town this small, but there's enough, and we're not a combat character. We have no weapons, we have nothing going on, we have that stupid bindle, which is going to just destroy my encumbrance and limit my ability to wield weapons. And even if I did wield a weapon, I don't have the skill to do anything with. So, having checked our map, having checked the local area, having introduced the idea of ASCII and how modular it is and how I can see everything that's going on, and I can use the button to look around. See, that's a giant raging fire. That's a high-intensity fire that's going to kill me if I touch it. I can now start to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear down this curtain, I'm going to grab the stick, I'm going to grab the long string, and I'm going to run uh, around the fire. Not get caught. That actually killed me in one of my other attempts to uh, show you guys around. It didn't go that well. So, let's talk to this guy. Now, you guys should probably try to take one with you, if only for the fact that it's an extra body. It can do extra attacks, and it can be a distraction, at least. At best, it's storage space, it's a good weapon, and it's a bodyguard. It can eliminate the challenge of the early game with this setup. So I'm going to leave him here, but you guys should consider it, if you want to play this way. So we, we want this lighter, but only because it's so cheap. And it's so cheap because it has so few charges. Now, usually I would probably go scavenge for other things to trade them instead of trading them my valuable whiskey, but for the purposes of demonstration, I can take the hit. Now, this heavy stick is junk. I picked it up because I could smash things with it. But look at it. It, it got a bad chance to hit. We have no skill. It has no black skill. This one has a black skill. It has a unarmed, unskilled character, we need skill. We, we need the black skill. So I took that, and I should be better prepared for what's coming next now. We're just gonna go back over here. Bandanas, eh. 
wood. I can get it before this comes and gets me. So I will. We're just going to scavenge the rest of the house. A flashlight. Now that is handy. They have nerfed the usefulness of flashlights. But make no mistake, it is still a very highly useful item. By default, I set all of my items to not have any s binding to them. Um, I have talked with a few people about how to get it to have bindings, but honestly, that's a hassle. I'm just... I don't care as much. I can just reset them when I want to, and it gives me a reason to keep looking. So, with that done, we're going to slow to a walk. Smash these... Oh, they're outside. And we want these heavy strings, and we're going to want to cut up the sheets. Now, there is one last thing I'm going to do before this house gets itself killed. Two, I guess. Uh, um, what are you? Cupboard. Nail. Now, I'm going to get myself some uh, nails. And I'm going to make it a nail board with my 2x4. Now, the nail board is going to be an improvement over the 2x4 because it does piercing damage. Not a big deal early game, but every little bit helps for this character. Second thing I want to do is I want to make some foot rags. Get rid of that barefoot penalty that you get. Third thing we want is to get warmth. And if you watch the other video I made, the one without any sort of audio in it, that was useful. The three most important parts of your body for this character are going to be... Where is it? Why am I... Yes. There we go. The three most important parts are going to be the feet, the hands, and the head. The hands are covered by this bindle, the feet are barefoot, and you have no head protection. Everything else can be cold too, but they're the most important. Speaking of cold, one of the biggest changes between my mod and base game. In my mod, there's a penalty for being chilly. In my mod, there's a penalty for things like being really cold. In the base game, you can be freezing to death and still be perfectly capable combatant. In my mod, you lose health, you take damage, you get cold. It's a very nasty, nasty thing. Oh, I guess our friend died. But that's not a bad thing. I enjoy that, and I hope you guys will as well. And you'll see these penalties pile up. For very cold, it can end up reducing your speed by tremendous amounts. Now, you see this right here, this light? This is a lava rift, and... I keep taking it for granted that I see it as a lava rift because, well, that's what it is. You don't see it? This is another building, and these are boarded up windows. That tells me it's a survivor house, which may or may not be mined, but probably doesn't have anything in it. I really want to risk my life to find out for it. So we're going to skip on right by it, I think. Actually, this does look like an empty house. I know what the survivor houses look like. Yes, I want to step on it. Thank you. I hate that. I don't like all the command prompts that come with this game. They're awful. So yeah, like I said, it's going to be an empty house. And I knew that because I know the setup and I know the game pretty well. Yeah, if only I had a crowbar. So like I said, I'm just going to be running around. Rubber boots, not that great. I'll put them on. It'll be fun. There's not a whole lot to talk about because I'm not encountering any resistance. I'm not encountering any monsters, no craziness. But you want to keep in mind that I don't have any storage. The storage I do have is detrimental to my survival because it's taking all my encumbrance. And we want warmth, storage, and protection in that order. I've got no warmth, I've got no storage, I've got no protection. Let's see what comes out of that. That's a dress or pocket watch, thank you, that's good. Cowboy hat, yeah. I don't know why two turbans count as a hat, but they do. It doesn't make sense to me. 
but whatever. And you see now, we've come to another bed. I don't know if you guys have been able to identify the layer of this yet. It's another house. It's the one with the two closets. I, I don't know. <coughs> I feel like this is something it just should know. So, anyway. Having done this right now, I'm going to make a makeshift knapsack. And so what I did that for is because I have two pair of pants. And they use the pair of pants that fit really well. <sighs> okay, but anyway, I have this knapsack. And this knapsack is going to give me more storage space. In fact, I can probably drop the bindle now. Yes. Oh, that bindle is just atrocious. You don't want the bindle. It's just going to block up your hand. It's going to give you penalties. It's not not a good item. It's as bad as the briefcase, which are, in my opinion, the two worst items in the game. It's bindle and briefcase. They're just worthless. Even the shopping bag offers more. Oh, here. So like I said, not a lot to talk about. Not a lot going on. I guess I could talk about emergent strategies out of this, but uh, the most important thing to do is to prioritize your loot, listen out for zombies, and you can hear them. Actually, I don't think those are zombies. You see how they're not... Sm there we are. I was going to say, you see how they're not smashing on the wall, right? Yeah, they're not zombies. No, that's a zombie. Come here. He's a good zombie. Now, having no skill, you want to try to stay away from the zombies if possible. But, I mean, there was no harm in me killing him. I don't want to touch his friend, though. I already have what I want. The pipe is going to offer me more than the nail board. It's faster. It weighs less. It takes up less space if I ever decide to drop it. And it still has the block. And you know what? It does just about the same damage. And, yeah, there's really no reason not to. So we're going to drop it. And we're going to move along, away from the bad zombie. Again, we want to prioritize what we pick up, and caffeine, caffeine, caffeine is definitely on the list of things we want to pick up. Not coffee makers, though. that's one of those bad items that are bad. One of my traits is spiritual, which for the most part I use to get my morale up. It synergizes really nicely with alcoholic, <laughs> which is kind of funny, yes, but it synergizes great. You can keep your morale well above 100 with alcohol and six minutes inside of a holy book. I don't know why people disable those books. I guess they play with fancy or something, or maybe they just don't care about morale. I wish they did. That's why I have filthy clothing, and after all... Anyway, <coughs> my horse is pretty high, but, uh, if I wanted to be stealthy, I guess I would have just walked in the door. The door wasn't locked. They don't spawn with locked doors. One of the benefits of making the mod is that I'm well aware of what a lot of these buildings can and can't do, or what monsters can and can't do. I don't know if you guys have that luxury. So as you see, even without skill, even without much in the way of proper armor, I made pretty short work of him, and yeah, I'm not sure what to say about it. One-on-one, -on -one, the zombies are not going to be a problem with you. If you have a problem, you see where I'm standing right here? There's a door right, right here. I can just let them pile in and one -on 1v1 them. It's pretty good. So awesome definitely on my list of things I want. I do not have a sewing kit. I thought I did for whatever reason. Anyway, can of beans can go. Sodas can go. I can probably drink them. Here we are. Chili. Now, I want to explain this. It says 
speed, minus 3, which is a problem. As you can see, my speed is down 15% just from being a little chilly out, which is my doing. But the real problem is it also has a chance to not only get colder and worse, but there is a dex penalty involved. You won't always see things like that because of how the game explains it to you. But there is a dex penalty involved. Oh, you know what's on the bed, right? Yes. Sorry, there is a dex penalty involved. And there's always been a dex penalty involved. But I have made it more pronounced. Especially with very cold. Once you start getting into very cold territory, you start risking your health. You start taking non-consensual damage. Non-consensual damage, yes. You start taking all of these very nasty penalties. That'll really slow you down. If you thought this was bad. So what I'm going to want to do, I think... It's very early. It's only 1.53. The sun will rise about 5.40ish. So we have three hours to hang around in town, and that's what I plan to do before I take off when the sun comes up. Part of the... Part of the start is going to be looting while I can. Sorry, if I'm not talking fluently or consistently. It's still relatively new to this process. But to start, we definitely want to focus on looting as much as possible. Can you open? And as fast as possible. We don't want to spend too much time in any one place. Yeah, I guess... Well... I've got a problem, though. I don't really have the space for this. So I think the solution is to... First of all, lighten myself up, and then we're going to make some fishing hooks. I want my fabrication up to level 1, so I can make a uh, shoulder holster. Shoulder holster, shoulder strap. That's not very hard to do, but you do need a supply of nails, which you're not going to find in the wilderness. In the wilderness, you can make pebbles. And you can, you can not only use them as weapons, because slings are a fantastic way to not get yourself killed. But you can also... You can also just level up on them. And you want to make sure your uh, focus is high when you do crafting in the wilderness, though. Because otherwise you'll just waste your own time as you spend more time searching for the stuff than you do crafting the stuff. Really not a big deal. Beauty magazines will level up your sewing to one faster than this book. I'm going to come back for it. Um, we want to cut this all up. So yeah, like I said, you definitely want to... You definitely want to level it up when you can and how you can. We got that. We got that. We got that. You're only allowed to wear two of one thing, but now I'm wearing three. So, take that what you will. Another flashlight. <coughs> and, uh, like I said, I wish there was more to talk about at the moment. And I could go into talking about anything, really. Other things for the mod, or anything. Yeah, we can take another one. The focus here, for me, because I'm a slow learner, and because I'm also bad-tempered, is keeping the focus up. So we're always wanting to drink more, we're always wanting to eat nice food, we want to stay dry, we want to stay away from the filthy clothing, because he's a slow learner. No, I don't want to use other components, I know what that means. My fab, is it 2 yet? No. Because my fab is down at 60, and there's really not a lot I can do about that, it's due in part because, well, it's cold out, it's all of that. But, yes, I'm going to say if my focus was at 90 or higher, this would have already been done. There's a dramatic drop in your XP gain as your focus drops. And that's a good thing, because it helps put the focus on... Focus. Surprise. I just 
wish it wasn't so bad because any amount of combat is going to drain your focus. Any amount of well, anything. You'd be surprised just what drains your focus. Do I need pants? Do I have pants? Yeah, we're gonna leave those all there. So I have my two fab, which is nice. But now I uh, want to wield the pipe. Thank you. Drink the beer, and the most important part about the beer is that it needs to be done all the time, and you need to do it in moderation. If you drink too much beer at once, you're going to get tipsy, it's going to have a bad time. Did you see that? My hand hurts. That's part of the frost nip. That's stage two, and as you can see, the uh, penalties roll for more, and now I can get pain. Careful, you'll catch a cold. That's something I've added to let you guys know that now you are in danger of losing health. And I don't expect you guys to actually catch a cold, because most of you guys can use gamma globin shots or uh, flu vaccines or whatever. But I do expect you guys to take a hint that you're losing this health now. And I've tried to embrace that and do a lot of that. Okay. Oh, go fuck yourself. This is what pebbles would help. Uh, something like a sling would have taken care of the rat. Something like a, uh, would have helped too, a, uh, bow. Thank you. Something like a bow would have helped as well, but... So now that I have more storage space, I can do things like drop the pouch. The pouch is better than the uh, than the bindle, but that doesn't make it good. A leather jacket. And now we're starting to get in the loot. You might be asking, why am I not worried about what made these corpses? And I am worried. Okay, fair enough. I am worried. But if I can get inside before it finds me then I don't have to worry at all, do I? This is the church. We have successfully made it to the church. Door is locked. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go in the door. I don't have time for this nonsense. But because I have made that hole, I'm going to cover that. And now I am good. I'm gonna stop my running. And I'm gonna start my searching. I suspect that was supposed to be down here on the desk, but it was an error in spawning, and it spawned there. Uh, okay. I, I think it was worth a flick. Just a little flick, just to make sure that we were doing good. And it's important to vet what you have on. And when I say vet, I mean prioritize what you're wearing. If you want to make sure that you keep your encumbrance down, if at all possible, I'm not dropping that leather jacket. I don't want to drop the trench coat, but if I have to, I have to. It's also dirty, so, you know. So we're doing okay. We're doing okay. I thought I had a sewing kit, a book. Maybe that was a different playthrough. Either way. Either way. I've tried this a few times, and uh, one time a couple of dogs found my feet and they numbed them up so much that they were bleeding several times over. Uh, one time it was just acid rain and then a moose and then acid rain. And then one time I just couldn't really think of anything relevant to say for long enough and I just kind of gave up on that. I'm fairly picky about that stuff, I guess. But I mean, eh. I'm not going to restart it now. I don't expect to have a million viewers, and I really, like I said, don't expect to make this a hobby. But I would like to showcase this stuff, and it does give me a chance to find something of interest in the game, too. Because I do get bored. I know a lot about the game as a result of my own playing. I'm learning more all the time. Now, um, it gets boring. So this helps. Yum. Oh boy, we got a lot of them. Um, go on. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. We have our lighter. And now I'm going to show you about all the fun of a lighter. <coughs> He's been a bad zombie. 
and so I'm going to light him up. And three to four wax because I have no skill. Did he steal my pipe? No. Do we have a leather pouch? We do have a leather patch. Let's take the time to make a sling now. No. 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 No, no, no. I told you I don't like these prompts. But now I have a sling. And like I said, just take a sling and sling coyotes, sling cracks, sling rats, sling birds. Anything that's really not a combat threat in any capacity is going to be something you want to sling. It's silent. You can even do it to wolves if you're like on the other side of a car door or something. A slings, they're not that powerful, but they work, especially if you bring enough ammo. So, that's something I advocate, along with using fire. You want to be careful with the fire, though, because if one of them had ammo on them, the chance of me pulling the ammo out of the fire before I got murdered, relatively small. Okay, boop. Boop. So, anyway, you see, it's not about fighting the zombies, it's about doing what you need to do to loot everything. I've got about another hour or so of night time before the day comes around. I'm doing good, there has been no major obstacles, scarce zombie resistance, which has been a blessing. Sometimes they're a lot worse than others, but with this new system, I think I've got it relatively well balanced. Maybe a little on the light side of population. But then again, you could argue that hordes are complete junk, so, I mean, eh. Okay, so, I again, I haven't been explaining what's been happening. I hope you guys can follow it still, especially because it's night. I've been doing this since 0 0.C, starting out in the day, or the nighttime, rather. And... It gets easier because I know the layout of most of the houses. It gets easier because I know what I'm looking for and I've done it so much. It gets easier because I designed the mod. I mean, that does grant me a certain amount of expertise in the matter, doesn't it? Uh, I really don't want to fight any of them. And in fact, I'm trying actively to showcase me running. Oh, Very valuable book. Always has been very valuable. It has gotten more valuable since cars have become such needy Nancy's about with everything. Oh, all the cars need all the maintenance and all the nonsense. And yeah. But as you can see, it's gotten to the point right now where I'm doing pretty good. I can't see myself dying. The only way I think I'm going to die before the sun comes up is if I do something silly or if random monster comes out of the dark. Okay, let's put the burners on because, like I said, I don't have that much time left. I want to keep an... Hold on. Did you see that? That eight. That eight in the dark could mean like a smoker or a puffy zombie of some kind, something that makes radiation. This is right after I implemented the radiation attack effects. So what I did is I took away a lot of the radiation that comes out of the clouds that the monsters spew and I made it special attacks instead. Now, some people were a little upset. They said it was stuff like uh, how come melee is untenable now? And that's not what it does it probably makes a melee easier because before you'd have to get into the cloud to hit the zombie. Now the zombie has to hit you before you get affected by it. It's a subtle difference, but it is on the road to making it more tenable if that's what you want it to be. But I like the idea of it being a radiation blasted pit. I don't like the idea of you just running around and it's completely healthy out except for all the zombies and mutations that aren't caused by mu radiation. Yeah, 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 you know? So, to each person their own, and I have offered the mod to completely remove radiation, and it does work with these radiation attacks. 
but I don't particularly feel the need to pander to people who want me to remove all radiation because radiation is mean. You know? It's what happens. So here I'm going to light this shriek on fire simply because it's going to be faster and I can take my towel back anyway. A second leather jacket. Yeah. I don't mind at all. Um, I don't need more than two though. If I find a third one, shit. If I find a third one, I don't plan to use it for anything. In fact, I'll probably just leave it. There's not a lot I am afraid of in the early game. Well, there's a lot I don't want to touch, but there's not a lot I'm actually afraid of. Zombie dogs are something I don't give any sort of credence to. There's no leeway to with those things. They will eat you. That'll be the end of it. Especially like the skeleton dogs. Oh, I still have nightmares about those things. Early game, skeleton dogs, just monsters, beasts. But uh, as you can see, the fire still handily puts down everything. I don't expect any trouble. There's a second pond over here. That's not part of the town. That's randomly generated. But uh, I'll go away, raccoon. The, the mammals in this game are so aggressive. It's part of the code that makes them things. But still. Is that a rock? That is not a rock. Okay, well, I don't particularly plan on staying in town. So let us begin our journey. We want to make sure we stay out of all the light. They have very, very good eyesight with this stuff. And I really don't need more zombies following me around. I've showcased most of my survival. I'm happy with it. Okay, we've got some rocks. We're gonna make some pebbles now. We're gonna have three pebbles. You guys know about batches, right? If you press B when in the crafting stream, you will go back and forth between making batches and making regular. And we're going to make 40 pebbles. We're going to ignore all the noise. And we're going to keep moving along. Keep moving along. Thank you. What's this? You see this uh, corpse over here? Oh, That must have been one of the ones I put down or something. I don't know. Yes, aw. I feel bad for it. Aye, aye, aye. We're going to drop this sling. And we're gonna shoot him. Pew! And look at that! Ick damage. One shot, one kill. And now I don't get nommed on by the rat. The rat will infect your body with biting, and it will generally be a nuisance. It drops your health as a result of some of the effects I put on it. It. You know, it hurts. It's a little bastard. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Let's read the book. Take a look. Like I said, you can just drop the filthy clothing. It's not a big deal. Nobody's going to say you're a bad person because of it. Although, this trench coat can probably go. Mm, yeah. Not a big deal, like I said. Let's just read a little. So, once I have survived and I've gotten what I want, and this isn't what I would call an ideal situation, but... In an ideal situation, I would train tailoring. And the reason I train tailoring is it's one of those safe skills. It's always useful. Uh, clothing and fabric is probably one of the easier to find items in the game. The exception being if you're in the extreme wilderness. You'll have to search around for like zombie scientists or whatever. But with clothing, you can turn junk into treasure. So it's worth it. 100% worth it. So, which is going to read our book and drink more booze because we want to read the book with happiness. Again, the higher your focus, the quicker this goes. Although, I found the hard way that high focus for a book doesn't matter as much as high focus for, like, crafting pants or something. I get more out of having a high focus with pants than I do with a book. Just how it happens. 
So having leveled that up, I'm going to make a leather vest. And this is going to take some time, which not a big deal. Chop down some more booze. Let's repeat the task. Again, you can see my focus is going back up because I've been drinking heavily and I've been drinking several kinds of alcohol. I'm sure a lot of you already know the benefits of alcohol and stacking books and things like that. But for those of you that don't, stacking books and things like that are going to help you a lot. Because you can get a high morale and you can have a lot of focus. Yeah, no, I don't want to numb. I like that. I gave all the grabbers little uh, talks. And they say things like nom and they have fun. And I have fun listening to them. And yeah, it's probably one of the ones that I find the most fun. Uh, ba -ba 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 We're going to drop the shotgun. And what do we got? I'm going to leave you guys here for the time being. Not because I dislike you guys or anything crazy. But because I'm going to cut the video off. I guess I'm going to wear the vest. Not a big deal. Yeah, I'm going to cut the video off here, and we're going to go from there.